Okay, hi there. Uh, oftentimes in a micro exam, you're given a question on subsidy. And I think it's quite important to be able to make a distinction between the consumer benefit and the producer benefit as part of your analysis. So let's take a look. Loads of examples of subsidies that the examiners could focus on. Some of them are subsidies directly to producers. So for example, a subsidy for biofuel production or a subsidy covering some of the costs of apprenticeships. Perhaps state aid to a loss-making business such as steel. Others are increasingly focusing on subsidies to the consumer, including, for example, renewable energy, uh, subsidies for childcare, effectively tax-free childcare, and some food and fuel subsidies for certain consumers, particularly actually in emerging countries. So my analysis in this video is going to take a look at a subsidy to a producer and to make a distinction between the producer benefit and the consumer benefit. My definition of a subsidy is any form of government support, mainly financial, could be otherwise, offered to producers and occasionally consumers. So, consumer benefit. What do we focus on here? Well, a subsidy to a producer or a supplier helps to lower the price to the consumer. Therefore, you look at the price paid before the subsidy compared with the price paid after, and that is going to be the consumer benefit. Key concepts are, first of all, consumer surplus. Can the consumer gain their some welfare? And secondly, what happens to their real incomes? Well, if you subsidise the producer, normally the price goes down. That leads to an expansion of demand. But of course, that depends on the scale of the subsidy, how generous it is, and also the price elasticity of demand. So let's take a look at the analysis diagram. Here's a, a market where we have subsidised the producer. The result is there's a downward shift in the supply curve. And of course, the scale of the subsidy is shown by the vertical distance between those two supply curves. Originally, the price was P1, output Q1 in equilibrium. After the subsidy, the price goes down to P2, the quantity expands to uh, Q2, the new equilibrium is C. So how do we show the consumer benefit? Well, consumer surplus before the subsidy was A, P, B1, area underneath the demand curve and above the price. After the subsidy, consumer surplus increases to A, C, P2. So the gain in consumer surplus is P1, B, C, P2. So as part of your analysis, if you get a question on subsidy, show the basics, but then also bring into your answer the possible impact on consumers in terms of their welfare. The fall in price from P1 to P2, assuming the nominal income of the consumer stay the same, assuming their budget has remained the same, will mean that their real income has gone up. For the supplier, it's, it, you need to distinguish between consumer benefit and producer benefit. So typically financial support for suppliers will generate extra profit and therefore increase the incentive to supply. The producer will get the market price, which is P2, plus the subsidy. So if we just go back a slide, the price falls to P2 because of the subsidy, but that's not necessarily the price the producer will get. This is how you have to develop your diagram. The producer gets the market price P2 plus the subsidy. Therefore, as we'll show in a second, they get extra revenue and increased producer surplus. And that's the essence of the producer benefit. So let's go through this diagram. The subsidy to the producer causes the price to fall from P1 to P2. We move to equilibrium at point C, output Q2. But then the producer will get the price P2 plus the subsidy, that's vertical distance CF. So they will get P3. That's the price the producer will get. So revenue before the subsidy was P1 times by Q1. Now they're getting P3 multiplied by Q2. Much bigger area of revenue. And the net result is an increase in their producer surplus or profit, assuming that other costs stay the same, the Keteris power of assumption. So consumers benefit and producers benefit. 
So are subsidies cost free? Well, the answer, of course, is no. Somebody has to pay for the subsidy. And the area of government spending is going to be P3, F, C, P2. This area here will be the government spending on the subsidy. So it's not cost free. Somebody has to pay for it. Ultimately, you can make a case for saying it's going to be the taxpayer that has to pay for it. Or perhaps the government has to borrow more money to fund the subsidy. So there we go. Uh, hopefully that explains the distinction between consumer benefit and producer benefit. If you get a question on subsidies, don't just draw the basic diagram. Try to bring in producer and consumer benefit using the concepts of surplus. OK, thanks for joining in.